well, let's click that button. There we go. <laughs> uh, well, welcome everyone. Welcome back here to the Launchpad. If you're new here, my name is Zach. I'm the host of the Launchpad, and this is our weekly night hangout that we call the Landing Pad. It's just where we can come, debrief everything that's happening in space, answer your questions. We hope to have guests in the future, play some Kerbal. We're going to be flying some crafts sent into us over on Discord in the last couple of days. I think I've got a couple more to pull off from uh, today. Uh, and just, yeah, hang out and talk about kind of everything that has happened in space. So as we get started, let us know where you're watching from. Uh, we've had two live streams already today, so this is the third one. So it's been a busy day. Uh, we had our Lockheed Martin and GM announcement uh, earlier this morning, and then we were live for Starlink 28 this afternoon, and now we're here for this. So uh, we went from having no live streams for a couple weeks to three in a day. Uh, so we are excited to be uh, back here, we've got Kerbal pulled up, so we, uh, if you have crafts, you can join us over on our Discord. All the links will be in the description of the video. Discord's free to join. Uh, we've got a huge public side of it where you can connect with me and the rest of the community, send in your Kerbal crafts, questions, answers, uh, and join that community there. If you want to join our Patreon, you can do that as well. Everything from there goes back into helping support the channel and for us to be able to have our teams on the ground. And one thing we're doing specifically with the the landing pad and everything. Uh, we announced it last week uh, and stuff, but one thing that you might have noticed different this week is we do have super chats and super stickers available. Uh, so we're excited that YouTube has accepted us into the partner program and are able to have that option now. Uh, that's a way that you can, you know, make sure we try to make sure we get all the comments and questions, but that's a way you can support the channel while also sending in a comment. So if you're interested in doing that, that's an option. One thing we'll be doing all the super chats and super stickers from any of the landing pad episodes for the next kind of two and a half months will all be going to the inspiration for fundraiser that we are doing to help partner with St. Jude's Children's Hospital to cure cancer, but also to help the families through those times. So uh, there's two ways you can take part in that. One, obviously the super chat or super sticker. Uh, most of the funds there go to the fundraiser. There is some that gets taken away by YouTube, or you can go to the link in the description, head over to our fundraising page. Uh, and make a donation there. If you do so, we'll make sure to shout you out for your donation tonight to make sure that we watch out for any of your uh, messages. But we're going to be doing that now until the end of July uh, to help support that with all of these landing pads. So thank you guys for being here. Uh, we'll get the night going uh, and we will go from there. We see James. Woohoo! There we go. We'll start the night off uh, for it. But I'm going to pull Kerbal up here. Uh, if you guys have questions or topics that you want us to talk about here uh, tonight, let us know in the chat. Use the hashtag AskTLP. That'll make sure that I uh, see those. You can also join the conversation in Discord if you want to uh, by joining our live comms tab. I've got that in my ear so we can hear uh, you guys asking questions in there as well. That's over on the Discord. So I'm just going to pull up Kerbal here and we will uh, just get the evening slowly started. Uh, I know a couple of our regulars uh, will be joining us a little bit later in the evening that are normally in the chat. Um, so we'll we'll be live for probably next few hours. Last time, I think we were almost four hours. Uh, we were well over the three mark. So we'll uh, see how the night goes. But this is all controlled by you guys. The more questions and topics you bring up, the longer we stay live uh, for it. So make sure to send those in. Last week, you might have seen me slowly working on a station uh, spent many, many more hours in the Discord uh, getting that completed. So that's in orbit. But uh, to start us off, I figured we'd pull up the SN15 craft from uh, G over in our Discord to get us started. SN15 was moved off of the launch pad today uh, and not down to the scrapping area and not down to the um, manufacturing area, but actually to a permanent display port, it looks like. So they, we did see uh, a couple months ago, they finished up with one, what looked like a display pad, and there was a second being still constructed. And it looks like that is where SN15 is gone. So hopefully SN15 will be there uh, for years to come for any of us that uh, hopefully will get down to Starbase. I'm hoping to get down there maybe end of the year uh, and be able to see the first ever Starship that flew and landed, which would be really awesome. Uh, and hopefully in the next couple months, we'll see the first fully stacked Starship here as well. Going to just download one file here that I realize I missed. Uh, and we will get 
started with that uh, after. I know we've got a lunar starship sent in here uh, as well. So this is, I believe this is, is this G's? Let me see. I don't think this is G's. Let's find the right one. Uh, you'll see some of the ones in here. These were some previous mods that I had um, in earlier that uh, some work, some don't. Um, but Kerbal likes to keep them around so they don't delete them. Oh, we'll hit launch. Hey, Dragon, I am good. How are you? Excited to be back for another landing pad night. It's crazy that it's already been a week. It does not feel like it's been a week. But uh, things in space finally are starting to pick up again. It had been a quiet few, kind of a quiet week with only like one Starlink. And now things are uh, starting to progress and pick up here. Let's scroll back to make sure I know these are right. Those are correct. That's correct as well. There we go. One thing you'll notice on my screen, there are a number of kind of overlays on. I uh, have a couple mods in, uh, installed. One is called MechJeb, uh, which we'll dive into a little bit more tonight. We dived into it last week as well. Uh, and it opens up kind of a whole new side of Kerbal um, that really makes you know more to fly. It's easier to fly, I would say, but if you have to program it right to do it, uh, and then I also have free EVA on, which we'll see later, which is uh, you can actually uh, fly around your space stations as if you were in first person uh, for it. It doesn't work perfectly. You can go through the walls and just fly out into space. But um, there's some mods and actually some of the Kerbal uh, kind of modules that actually have more detail in them than you would think. So it's neat being able to do that. So we're going to get started here with a launch. We'll see if we can nail this the first time or not. Normally takes us a couple attempts, but uh, if you're just joining us, welcome. This is the landing pad. This is our weekly hangout where we answer your questions, fly your crafts, uh, and things like that. So make sure you're sending in your questions. We'll be answering those through the evening. Let us know where you're watching from, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, Dragon, I saw that question um, earlier. We haven't been able to find an answer on it yet. It's not something that they've um said so i'm not too sure uh ooh, definitely was supposed to turn that off earlier but that's okay um it's not something spacex has left an answer with yet uh so we are watching to see that uh and see what uh is going on with that because it, it is a good question uh if you've, if you've not seen the chat dragon's asking how often do they have to change the falcon nine legs and uh, we've yet to been able to kind of find an answer for that, uh, but it's a valid question. We got James from Abilene, Texas. I wish I knew where that was. Where are you? Houston, Corpus, San Antonio, Austin, Dallas. Where you at? Where you're, rough bearing there, James. I've been in Texas. I lived in Texas for a few months, so I roughly know it, but. Just gonna turn this up just a little bit so you guys can hear as well. Big middle of the state, three hours. What? Well. Okay, sounds good. Okay, give some bearings. It's a big state. <laughs> Have you been down to Starbase yet?
I visited for Boca Chica to Mars on May 1st. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Uh, and I drove out to see SMV. Oh, that's amazing. That would be cool. Yeah, I heard the Boca Chica to Mars was quite the event. So SN15 looks like it is going on permanent display, Golden. Uh, it has passed the, it's been removed from the launch pad. Uh, it passed the manufacturing site and kept going down Highway 4 there uh, and turned right after it towards, uh, I believe, where the RV parks are. Um, but most people seem to believe that it is going on to the uh, one of the pads that they built uh, a little bit earlier uh, in the year. They have a, two little concrete pads that looks like the feet can sit on. Um, so I'm not sure if we'll actually be able to see underneath it. They did remove the raptors, so maybe they'll install some sort of fakish raptor in it. Um, but we'll have to see. This is flopping all over the place. 600 meters from ground, click 7 and Z. Oh. Stop spinning. Oh boy. This is where we're Starbase Museum, exactly. You're just joining us. Welcome. This is our weekly hangout we call the landing pad. Feel free to send those questions in. Uh, we are doing what we hope we never see a starship doing right now, which is spinning out of control. But uh, we will see that. Yeah, when this crash, if I press 7, it, no, it, it flopped the wings. It did flop the wings. She built uh, this craft. So this was one of the models. I'm just not sure which model. Radial out, gears. And we'll recover. Oh, well, we sort of recovered. The other craft is better. I'll pull that one up here. That's not the landing pad. Well, I mean, it could be. If if you look where compared to where the launch pad is, if you were thinking this is Boca, it's you know not far off. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't joined us for one of the landing pads before, it's normally me answering questions mixed with crashing a lot of spacecraft in Kerbal. It's just taking a nap. Exactly. It's it, it's practicing for the orbital flight when it has to belly flop into the ocean. That's what it's doing. It's just practice. Uh, let's find the good one here from G. I think it's this one. Is this the fully stacked one? Yes. There, we'll try the fully stacked one. Yeah, let's launch from KSC2. Why not? So if you have questions or topics, bring those in. Drop them in the chat, and we'll be answering those live. If you also have Kerbal Crafts, I mentioned at the top of the kind of show, you can send those over on Discord. We'll pull them up uh, and give them a try here tonight. Oh, 
Oh. Okay, did not like that landing. Oh. oh. So this is a second KSC site that I have that's kind of a mod here. I don't know why it fell over, though. We're going to take a look. So is BN3 getting hot gas thrusters? Will they have a contingent nitrogen? Great question there, GI. Um, Elon did say they want to be on to hot gas thrusters for BN3. That's what they're targeting for the first orbital flight. Now, they have not said whether it will uh, be exclusively that. That was a very terrible takeoff, but we survived it. Um, but they do want to be on to hot gas thrusters by then. So uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, they've only got one more in the middle, and BN2 looks more like a SN 7.0123, that it's more like a test tank than an actual full booster. BN3 is getting ready to be staffed. Um, so they'll have to be able to do that pretty quickly. Um, I don't believe they'll be able to have a contingent nitrogen thruster. Uh, I don't think the booster has been designed in the way that you could have like the double X, like you'd have to have two ports type thing, or you'd have to have them join and shoot out. So I don't think you'd be able to have the contingency um, booster, but that's a good question. Fortunately and unfortunately, I do not have enough, do not get paid enough to know that. Uh, Golden, when do Artemis people, when Artemis brings people on the moon, when Artemis brings people on the moon, will the Lockheed Martin and GM Rover go on the new Starship along with the crew? Interesting question there. So one, Lockheed Martin and GM, uh, if you didn't watch it yet, take a couple seconds. It's about a two minute video. If you go, just watch the announcement video that was posted on our channel this afternoon. If you want to watch the full about hour live stream with the full announcement with the press and the... Uh, conversation and stuff with uh, astronaut Leland actually emceed the announcement uh, who flew on the shuttle a number of times. Uh, you can take a look at that over on the channel, but watch the two minute one. Um, Lockheed Martin and GM have not won a contract from NASA for lunar rovers. They are building and designing in advance of NASA releasing that contract uh, to hopefully be at a point that they will be able to submit a really um, strong bid to hopefully win that. Now, there is the rover being designed by Toyota and the Japanese Space Agency. Uh, that is a very more, it's a lot more modern, I think, in the design. So the one that Lockheed Martin is designing, one, they do want to make it an autonomous option. Uh, so that's a really great thing. But it's very much like an updated version of what we saw before. The astronauts are outside in at least two, maybe four seats. Uh, and stuff like that. The one that Japan and Toyota are working on, uh, I believe, has designs where they actually want them to be able to be inside, not in the suit, as an option. Um, ooh, are we going to... Can mm, uh -oh. We might not have gone up enough to have survived that, but we'll see. Maybe we can save it in a landing. We're just going to tell it to land somewhere and see what it does. Um, so that's what it is. Whatever rover is selected, the rovers will most likely be sent uh, on the cargo starships, uh, which is a contract that SpaceX has won. So SpaceX won a couple months ago, uh, or might have even been late last year, the contract for cargo to the moon with cargo starships. Uh, and in one of the renders, they showed three lunar rovers um, stacked on top of each other that could come out on the conveyor kind of ladder crane uh, and be lower to the surface so if anything i believe they will be launched on those now that isn't saying that the lunar one couldn't have an option as well um there's a lot of room on the lunar starships and if they're only going to be housing you know six people max seven people max uh generally two to three type of thing um then it would be more likely that they could include that there as well so we'll have to wait and see on that one uh, but it is definitely a possibility we could see both. Yes, spiraling in control, sort of. It is flying weird tonight. I think we might load up a different craft here. Enable sea level engines. Aren't these? Oh, no. That might help. I think we're, we'll, we'll land it and take back off. We got time. Uh, 
I shut down the oh ooh, that was a bad idea. Just vented all of our extra fuel. So we're definitely just gonna be landing this one. Right, shut those down. There we go. Golden Eagle. I bet Tesla will bid for the Lunar Rover too. Cyber ooh, a cyber rover. That could uh be interesting. That'd actually be really cool. I know a lot of people say that like when they want to launch a cyber truck, you know, a lot of people hope that we'll see a cyber truck on one of the first starships on like a prove, um, um, you know, a mission just to prove uh, what it can do. But uh, I have to see a cyber star. Yeah, that could be interesting. Actually, that could actually be very interesting. The old Coke screw, cork screw launch profile. Definitely <laughs> delightfully Kerbal, isn't it? And there's like chunks of our booster. I think that's the launch. That's a probe. I don't know what that probe's from. But uh, yeah. What was the point of the Falcon Heavy since it almost never gets flown? So it's going to get flown a lot more in the next couple of years. Like, And when I say a lot more, a lot more. Uh, let me just pull up the launch schedule for it here. So Falcon Heavy's had three flights so far. Uh, it has flown February 6, 2018. It flew the famous Roadster mission. Uh, it flew Arabsat 6A in April 11, 2019. Uh, and then it flew a U.S. Air Force STP-2 mission on June 23, 2019. Starships really like to fall over tonight. Um, now what we have scheduled coming up, they did just make some adjustments to this schedule, uh, for it, but we do have a, another U S space force or well, the first U S space force, uh, dash 44 mission, which will be the last quarter of this year. Um, it was supposed to be in the summer, but they've delayed it because the payload's not ready. There will be a Visat three mission in the first quarter of 2022 that was pushed because of the delay from this U S space force one. There is also an Amerisat SB mission scheduled for 2022, as well as there is a NASA mission in August 2022. Plus, there's another U.S. Space, two more U.S. Space Force missions in quarter three and quarter four of 2022. So there alone, you've got one, two, three, four, five, at least five next year, one this year, maybe, uh, hopefully, but at least five the next year. And then the year after that, You've got the Griffin Mission 1 in 2013. Uh, and then in Q4 of 2024 is when they'll be launching the first a uh, first two modules for the Artemis program uh, to the lunar orbit. So they will be launching both the power and the propulsion element uh, and the habitation and logistics outpost. Uh, the two modules will be together in the first ever Falcon Heavy with an extended fairing. Uh, and that'll be launching Q4 2024. Shortly after that, or possibly even before it, there's going to be at least two Dragon XL flights, which are larger dragons to get to lunar uh, orbit, uh, which will be for the new uh, space station. So that's going to be Gateway Station. Uh, and there's another Insta uh, Intel Sat uh, one that's scheduled um, that uh, they're not too sure. It was meant to be the first commercial. Uh, but it still hasn't, it's been maintained, but there's no satellite that's been listed for it. So we don't have a date on that one. So uh, obviously there'll be a lot more to fill in in 2023 and 2024 as we generally start to know launches about a year out. Uh, but 2022, I mean, five or six for sure. Plus we're going to be seeing a lot more Starship testing at that point and stuff. It is still very valid. And I think uh, a lot of people are like, oh, well, Starship will replace Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, depending on the payload. If you don't need to launch a satellite in, you know, if you think Falcon Head or Falcon 9, the amount of CubeSats they launch um, and different things like that, you know, they've been able to do ride shares where they only put 30 Starlink satellites up and then fill the top half with ride shares uh, and things like that. Starship, yes, you theoretically could do that, but you're now talking about filling, you know, the cargo variant, we're not too sure, but six, eight stories of a building of payload. Um, so yes, there will be times that they do like ride shares and things, I'm sure. Um, but there's going to be a lot of reasons why Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy are still very usable. And that's the same reason why a lot of people, you know, love, hate relationship with SLS. 
there's still options that SLS could be smarter than Starship. Not many, <laughs> uh, and not financially, but maybe the process of it or different things like that. So um, I think once Starship is finalized and we know how it's built, how the payload integration goes and all that, that's where there's going to be a lot more questions because right now Starship's built vertically. So if you have a satellite that you need to integrate horizontally and then it can be lifted vertically, Starship's not going to work for you, at least in what we currently know. So there's going to be a lot of things like that to uh, see what happens um, in the future. That's, that's, that's the hard one. Until Starship's operational, we won't know what it will replace uh, because they still have to prove that they can do that big jaw uh, on the Starship uh, that works and how they'll do that. Because originally people thought it was going to be kind of like a clamshell. Now it looks like it's going to be like one side because you have to have that header tank. Um, but really good question there. Uh, but it will be flown a lot more. It's something people have to request too. Like they're not just going to launch a Falcon Heavy because it looks cool. Um, it costs a lot more to do so. Obviously, you're flying three Falcons instead of one. So unless you need it for the weight, um, you're not going to see it. What are your thoughts on NASA funding a review to see if Falcon XL could be used as a gateway segment? Falcon XL? What do you mean Falcon XL? You mean Dragon XL? I'm assuming you're meaning Dragon XL. In that case, yes, uh, definitely. I think um, there's options. I mean, if you look at what they do right now with uh, Soyuz being launched, I'm looking this way. This is where the chat is. Uh, I'll get there, G1 or GI. Um, absolutely. I think, you know, they could look at that. If you look at how we're uh, supplying the International Space Station right now, uh, it's very similar. We launch a cargo up. Uh, and it gets used, and then it comes back. I think the question, I don't know if we know yet if Dragon XLs can come back. I just want to take a look here. 5,000 kilograms, 11,000 pounds to lunar orbit. Uh, can stay at Gateway for 6 to 12 months at a time. Can it return? I'm not sure we know yet if it can. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming it should be able to return similarly uh, to the cargo dragons we know and love right now. Uh, I'll have to take a look into that one. If it's returnable, then yes, it would make sense that they could use it uh, as possible gateway segments, just like we do now where, you know, they do not live, but they do uh, work and store a lot of stuff in those extra Soyuz that are attached or in Crew Dragon or things like that. Uh, because there is quite a bit of storage in Crew Dragon now that it only flies four instead of the seven people. Um, so I think it makes sense. If we're already going to be flying these cargo vessels there, um, it makes sense that they can be looked at being used as part of the gateway. Um, also, if you can dock to it, at you know it would probably be an end piece, but if it's emptied with cargo, what why wouldn't you use it? If, it, if it's pressurized, which it has to be, uh, it would make sense. Uh, Folded Eagle, I can't believe Jim Bryanstein is lobbying for Visat. I hope they don't slow Starlink down. Yeah, I don't think they will. Spe Vi yeah, there's some interesting things right now of Visat trying to do an ultimatum with the FCC over SpaceX Starlink, um, saying they want to do a constellation as well. They're, they're authorized, I believe, to do one. Uh, but they can't keep up with SpaceX. And I think my response in some ways is welcome to business. Um, in business, it's first there with an idea, first operational. Maybe not always the best, but you're first there. Um, that would be like, well, what would it be? Uh, it'd be like a tech company releasing a new phone or a computer and then saying, oh no, stop them. We have one, two coming, but we need six more months. It's not going to happen. Um so, I, I mean, I can understand how they're saying, you know, SpaceX has a um, advance, you know, they, they have an advantage necessarily kind of thing. They, they, Starlink is a company, SpaceX is a company, they work together. Um, but, yeah, I don't think there's much to it. I, I don't think they've presented anything necessarily that's there. I think they could maybe have something if SpaceX is trying to change or expand their constellation. 
into something that might interfere with the vice that one that you could see that um and i think jim bridenstine i i'm not too sure i haven't seen much of what he's done with it uh, i'll have to take a look into that so i don't want to say anything on that but i i, I think competition's good the u.s likes competition uh competition is why prices come down if you're i'm in canada uh if you come up here you know our cell phones are two to three times the cost of u.s cell phone plans a month for worse plans we just got unlimited data a year before the pandemic started in Canada. Uh, and it's, you know, unlimited where it's like 100 gigs or something. You're never going to go over it. But that's when we first got unlimited. We still had phone plans that we offered with local calling only. We still had long distance calling just a few years ago. Um, texting is now included. You know, we got that maybe five years ago, I want to say they started including that. But there are still plans that don't include texting. Um, where in the States, because of the amount of population, obviously it's cheaper to um, launch, uh, not launch, but build the um, like cell towers and things like that, um, that it, it can be cheaper. So the U.S. likes competition. Um, and I think that uh, that makes sense uh, for it. So I'm going to pull up a, another craft here. I'm just going to download this one in really quickly just downloaded it out of the discord so forgot to throw it into the game bear with me but keep the questions coming let's see we got a few more here will new glenn ever be launched or even built yes we will see new glenn fly um there's too much money that's been wrapped up into it at this point uh for them not to they do have contracts for stuff they want to launch as well um but uh yeah we'll uh We'll see what happens with that. It might not be as fast as we would hope, but uh, we'll most likely see it at some point. How do we know at the launch pad isn't the one who tagged the Buran? Because <laughs> uh, I have no idea where it's located. And I'm in Canada. We're in lockdown. I can't fly anywhere right now. If I fly anywhere, I have to quarantine for two weeks in a government-run hotel and pay the bill. And it's like two to two and a half thousand Canadian, which is... Probably like 1500 to 2000 American. I don't have, if I had that type of change, that's going to my inspiration for a trip, not to a government hotel. So, no. And I would want to keep the brawn. Like, let's, you know, let's get a proper museum. Let's keep it. You know, it, it is a piece of history, whether we like it or not. Um, and we need to not lose our history. Um, that was one thing I saw. Some people have been changing like the first speech on the moon of, you know, one small step for man, one small leap for mankind. You can't change that to humankind. I get the idea, but that's the quote. We can't change quotes. That's the point of a quote. But uh, we need to keep our history. We need to celebrate our history and we need to make new history. And I think that's what Artemis is going to do, which is uh, really good. Uh, it'd be exciting to see Artemis up there. It'd be exciting to see a Canadian on the moon. Uh, lots of new firsts coming up. Why isn't the brand in a museum already? It's Russia. <laughs> Let's, yep. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Russia. That's basically all I can say to that. Um, they've got two of them right now in a hangar. I believe there's two of them. Um, but the roof's collapsing and they're being damaged and now they got tags. So, um, they are on a base. It's not like they're just out in the middle of like a farm or something. They are in a base that you have to sneak into. So, um, not very good. Hey, Jovi, how's it going? Great to have you here. Feel free to send in any questions or anything there. Golden, what do you think the first words on Mars will be? Do you think it will be the same as Armstrong? I think it could be special if it was the same. I mean, then at that point, sure, I could see, you know, people changing it. Um, you know, one small, you know, one small step for humanity, one giant leap, you know, or, or I feel like it needs to be somewhat different. But I think if you took, you know, one small step for humanity, one giant leap for, man, you know, humankind, I don't know. Like, I, I think it has to be different. I, I don't want it to be cheesy. And I think that's one thing we have to be careful with it. 
Uh, I, a lot of people on Twitter, I find, say like, oh my gosh, and then, you know, crack your, your mic as if they did that on the moon, which people wanted them to do. I think that'd be funny if someone wanted to play a joke. Um, when that first starship lands on the moon with a crew, that is going to be on every TV everywhere. There is not going to be a topic bigger than that. Um, and I think it's very important to set that standard. Um, you're also going to be setting a standard of what Mars is. Um, you know, a lot of people have been talking about what's Martian law going to be, what's who's going to be the government of Mars um, and things like that. And I think that has to be really thought through a lot as well. Um, so though it'd be nice to copy what was said with Armstrong, I think it should be different, but it could take a similar uh, feeling, I think could be quite nice as well. So a good question there. Gerardo, do you think Starship will fly a crew to Mars in 2026? Uh, yes. 2024 car... Why is this bouncing? We're going to go to a different launch pad here. Uh, Let's we'll switch here. Uh, do you think Starship will fly a crew to Mars in 2026? I realize I'm saying there's something bouncing and you guys can't see it. Let's try this again. So this is another one built by G. Uh, oh, no, I didn't. You're going to see what I just saw. And then we're going to lo load it on a different launch pad. Um, yes, 2024, we will see crew for sure. 2020, uh, sorry, cargo for sure. 2026, we will see crew. The question is, will crew land or will it be a crew flyby? Um, a lot of people are wondering if the first, like just like the moon, the first missions were flybys. They didn't land. Um, I think we could definitely see oh do we stick it eh eh stuck the landing we're gonna warp to daytime too just so it's a little easier to see um but yeah what's what's crazy is that's five years we went almost 10 years without a u.s craft and now we're talking you know five six years technically um after we finally have a u.s craft back that we're not only going to the moon we're going to Mars. And I think we might see Starship with crew go to the moon maybe before Artemis. And I think that's where there's a big, you know, can SpaceX do that, um, that people are talking about. And I don't have an answer for that one, unfortunately. I think if SpaceX is ready, the question is who's SpaceX going to fly? So SpaceX can fly NASA astronauts. NASA astronauts go through all that training. SpaceX technically could train its own SpaceX astronauts that are not NASA astronauts, and they would have to then prove to the FAA that their crew is trained and safe and secure for a launch, and then go through that process of, you know, building their astronaut program, just like you have ESA astronauts, CSA astronauts, uh, Roscosmos, and things like that. So there is an option that we could see SpaceX astronauts rather than NASA astronauts go to the moon first. But if we're going to see that, they need to start it soon. Astronaut training is not three weeks type of thing. You know, like with, you know, if we look at Inspiration4, their crew's already been in the simulator for well over the month, and they're only going for three days in orbit, and it's all automated. They're not rendezvousing with anything. They're not landing anywhere except when they come home, which they're splashing down. It's a 100% automated mission, but they need to be prepared in case there is an issue. So it is, you know, six to nine months of training. Um not back to back. They've got their lives still, but I think that's a big, big part of it here. So we're going to have to give this craft a try here from G. He says, when you start re-entry, press four, five, and six and point retrograde and then enable the sea level engines. Try out the gear here. Uh, it looks like I don't actually have control of the craft yeah there's no 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 control we're gonna revert this and try it on a different launch pad and see did you 3d print that spacex helmet behind you that i did not that was a prize that i won during the early inspiration four days uh on twitter uh let me let me grab it you said we would do this the last couple streams and then not done it. Hmm. 
No. Yeah, we'll be back here. In three, two, there we go. So that is, it is 3D printed, but it's pretty sweet. And I'm very tempted to take it to Kennedy Space Center for a launch someday uh, and see. It, it's big. <laughs> uh, now I just need the suit to match. And then that will go on one of the mannequins that's uh, behind me here. But uh, yeah, it's a, a, a nice keepsake and it looks pretty good in the back. So uh, excited to have it. This is from Ruben and I, I want to say it's shopyourlimitless.org. Um, they have some SEM stuff that we'll be hopefully showing here uh, on the channel in the future. So make sure to stay tuned to that. We're going to be doing some kind of summer series um, that we'll be doing, showing you some STEM stuff that you can do at home yourself or with your kids or different things like that. But uh, yeah, during our during our Inspiration4 fundraiser uh, coming up later in the summer, which we'll be doing, uh, if you want to take part in that, you can check out the link in the description and be part of that. But we'll do a stream. I'll probably wear this the whole stream. We'll see. It's uh, it's not like it's not heavy. Just you probably can't hear me that great. So we'll have to get a different microphone uh, for that. But uh, it's definitely in the plan. So I'm gonna throw this back on the shelf here, and I'll be right back. There we go, and we're back here. We'll see if this will load up. But uh, that bar that was just on screen, if you want to take a part in that and help uh, raise, we've set a goal of 5000 which I think we can do together. I know it's been a difficult time, but check that link in the description. If you do make a donation, uh, you'll get a shout-out uh, on stream. Um, that uh, will just give you know a thank you for that. We'll shout you out on social and stuff as well um, for your generosity if you want to. So, yeah, really cool. First fly to 20 meters, then deploy the landing legs. Yeah, it's a cool helmet. Okay, first fly to 20 meters, then deploy landing legs. I don't think I have... There's no probe in it. Oh, is it I'm out of electricity? Here, we'll turn electricity off. There, you know. Who doesn't love a good cheat? Yeah. So we're going to keep this working. Oh. To restart that because I definitely killed the landing legs there. But uh, keep the questions coming in. We'll answer those live. Feel free to join the conversation over on Discord as well. What will come first? New Glenn gets to orbit or Starship gets to Mars? Um. Ooh. Uh, probably Starship. Starship with crew or Starship? Starship cargo, 100% first. Starship crew, 50-50. I'm not sure the landing legs survive G. They look pretty dead. <laughs> Go ahead. 
government on Mars will probably be disturbed by the country that sent them there. Um, maybe. I think we're, we'll definitely see some stuff of, you know, and that's where like the Artemis Accords come in um, on how will those be operated with Mars and different things there. So, um, yeah, it's something we'll have to see that happens because it'll be very different. Try a different launch pad. Okay, we'll try the traditional launch pad. See if it launches out of that okay. Launch pad. Launch. But uh, let's take a look and see what launches we have coming up. I know we've got a one web tomorrow. Uh, we may or may not cover that one. We'll see if they're going to do a stream on it. Uh, and then we have a couple of China launches coming up as they continue to expand their station. And then we have the CRS-22 mission, uh, which is the Falcon 9 Block 5 heading up to the space station. Uh, it's going to be carrying two of the new solar panels, which is really exciting. It's been over a decade, probably over 15 years since the big solar panels went up. Um, actually, probably closer to 20 now. Um, so exciting to see some new solar panels, big solar panels heading up there. Uh, we're working on a video probably coming out tomorrow or the next day that's going to cover everything that's being sent on it. There's some really interesting, they're sending squid up. There's this like weird bug thing they're sending up a whole bunch of stuff so we're going to dive into that so make sure you stay tuned for that and then we have another Sirius XM launch uh coming up on June 10th and then one that I'm excited for is targeting June 15th uh and that is Firefly Alpha's maiden flight so definitely stay tuned uh for that we're hoping they will have a live stream that we'll be able to uh bring you live commentary for and take a look and see what that is if not we will do a flash update uh for it Group 1, you toggle sea level engines. With Action Group 2, you toggle vacuum engines. With Action Group 3, you toggle the landing engines. Okay, 1. 2 is not doing anything. And neither is 3. But 1 is working, so we're going to fix that. Yes. Folded Eagle. Is there any doubt the first city on Mars will be named Elon? Not my idea. I heard that on Reddit. Ooh, I mean, that's a neat idea. Name it after Elon. Hmm, I hadn't heard that one. Uh, it's a possibility. I mean, Elon, never say never. But uh, there we go, toggle engines. We need idea, actually. There we go. Now our accident group should work. And for four, we got our landing. There we go. We're good. Let's try this again. It's a neat idea. I, I think that goes into with what's the government. You know, government's, you know, going to decide. We've already named a lot of stuff after similar things on the moon or Earth. So I think there might be different governments on Mars, depending on the different countries that land there. That's a very large possibility, depending on, um, you know, and this is where it comes into, you know, taking land borders all that you know i would hope maybe mars is somewhat more designed like the international space station is but i think we're going to see how the moon operates in the next couple of years you know we're in that second race to the moon that uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens but uh perfect so landing gear are working one two three perfect everything's working we're going to set this, radial out, and launch. Let's just see what happens. Is it, re -possible to, is it possible to rebuild the atmosphere of a planet? That is the hundred million, billion, trillion, quadrillion dollar question. Theoretically, yes. Practically, I mean, Elon wanted to nuke Mars at one point. Um... Once you have people on it, it's going to be a lot harder. 
But, uh, you know, give us a couple hundred years there. If we start producing water and things on Mars, that's going to naturally start changing the planet if we're doing enough of it. Um, so we'll have to see what happens with that. First fly so landing legs can work correctly. Yep. I'm going to try one thing here that I haven't tried yet, and I want to see how this works. Let's try that. There we go. Give this a try. You can send in your questions live on the chat there. Give that a try for a, a Yeah, I can click on them too and bring them up as well. So I'm being asked by Discord when I'm going to make a MUN base. I'm not sure yet. Maybe next week. Maybe that'll be our, our task next week, is building a MUN base during the... Ooh, okay. Stabilize. Stabilize. And we're almost out of the atmosphere. Ooh, we're at okay. We're gonna put fuel back on. There we go. So we definitely ran out of fuel, but that's okay. Let me readjust this because you're not getting the audio, but you should be now. There we go. Just going to finalize our orbit here, and then we will attempt to land, land a maneuver. And actually, we're going to do it this way. Engage autopilot. Oh, okay. It's going to turn our, uh... All right. we're going to circularize this orb and then we'll bring it back in. Actually, we'll take it to the mud. Why not? But to keep sending those questions in, we'll be answering them or a topic. Doesn't have to be a question. You can send that in as well. And we can answer that live on the air for you. To me, Vulcan is obviously being delayed by the BE-4 not being flight ready, despite what ULA and Tony Bruno says. What else would Amazon fly on the Atlas, which is more money and don't use their and doesn't use their engine? Hmm, interesting. Possibly. I haven't dived too deep into that one. But uh, yeah, the Atlas is a proven. I agree. It looks like the BE-4 isn't ready for prime time. Yeah, BE-2 definitely, or BN-2 definitely won't be flying. Oh, you're sorry, BE-4. Yes. So many acronyms for this. None <laughs> of the same. Yeah, B4 is definitely, uh, yeah. It, it'll take a little bit. But we'll see what happens. Stranger things have happened. As our Discord said, B4 is from Bezos. And I'm not repeating the second half. But read Elon's tweet. And you'll understand.
So to give this a fair shot, just because I definitely messed up its launch inclination, we're just going to disengage this, turn that off, set orbit, go to the Mon. Mon. There we go. And then we're going to enter our target coordinates, and we're going to land near the Apollo Memorial. We're going to land at target. And right now we're going to be using our vacuum engines. What do you think of the Virgin Galactic flight? I think any, I, I think it looked like a really good success. Uh, I'm happy that they're talking about starting live streaming to the public. I think that really should tell us that they are very happy with how it went um, for that flight, which is a good sign. And I think anything that's giving more people an opportunity to go to space, even if it's for a shorter mission, um, you know, minutes or hours, um, that's a that's a good thing. I think it'll help bring costs down. Uh, when there's competition, the costs can't be outrageous. When there's only one option, costs can be outrageous. So I definitely think that's a, a good thing. Um, and we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But it's a neat idea. Uh, I think it's one of those things that a lot of people would love to fly it. It's a, you know, a combination of a rocket and a uh, kind of a more of a plane, which I think people are more used to. So I think more people might be open to it than something like New Shepard or even Crew Dragon. Uh, just for the fact of that it is more like you board like a plane. Like you could walk up to it and go in. Uh, you just so happen to get dropped out of that plane in your rocket and then shoot off up to the stars. But um, we'll have to see. Uh, I think it's a really neat idea. Um, and it seems to be working. So that's a good sign. What do you guys think of the Virgin Galactic flight? So if you let us know in the chat, if you could go to space right now for like 20 hours, would you want to go, cost isn't an issue, would you want to go on a New Shepard, Virgin Galactic, a Crew Dragon, I, I want not a Starship. Let's be ones that are technically functional. Virgin Galactic, New Shepard, Cargo Dragon, or uh, Crew Dragon. Let us know in the chat. Which would you want? Crew Dragon, a thousand percent? Dragon, why? Crew Dragon, since you could stay longer. True. Crew Dragon, you could do up to 10 days. Crew Dragon, I just want to wear the suit. Me too. Helmet. I just need the suit. Like Elon, SpaceX, you watching? I'll take a suit. We'll do we'll we'll do a charity video or something. And, uh, I, oh, okay, we just got a ping in our Discord. The new Shepherd seat is now up to 3.5 million. Uh, wait, fake? No. Is that real or fake? I'm checking the website. It's been sitting at 2.8 for a while. So, let's see. I'm checking Blue Origin. I feel like Twitter would be going off if it jumped that much. Okay, it's still 2.8 million. So it didn't go up. Blue Origin is... Well, a lot of people are like, did Elon bid? Um, I think, we, I think we've seen it top at 2.8 because people don't want to push it because it's going to go to a live auction on that last day. Um, and I don't think people want to push it so high that then on that last day, it's you know way out of reach. So I, yeah, still at 2.8. You had me you had me jumping that it went up seven hundred thousand and no one noticed. Here come our landing legs. Fully deployed. I do like yeah, the windows on New Shepherd are really cool. They're three times this height of like an airplane window. I really do like that. It very much feels like a commercial flight style, you know, the way it goes. 
Um, I, I hope maybe in the future they just improve like the complex that it feels more touristy. Like right now it feels very like SpaceX's launch complex even still feels very inviting. I guess I would say like the tower where the new Shepard one is very construction. Now, obviously they're just going to do their first flight. So maybe they'll clean it up a little, but it'd be nice if it looked just, you know, maybe a little nicer, a bit more of an experience um, to it where the SpaceX ones, you know, you walk out the doors, you can jump in the Teslas, you go. Uh, it seems pretty nice. A lot of people are wondering, will Inspiration4 come out of those double doors or will they come from the SpaceX facility? Because it's not a NASA mission. Um, so something that we might see different there, setting kind of a new precedent for private crew, uh, for full private missions. Do they come from NASA or no? So we'll uh, have to see there. But there we go. We landed. Seemed to do really well. It landed on this hill. Uh, we were supposed to land somewhere near the Apollo Memorial, but I think we missed that. My coordinates may have been slightly off. And then this is what we would expect to see going up to a lunar gateway station. So it would then launch back up and go into a orbital configuration. It doesn't seem to want to... There we go. Now it's turning. We're just going to put this into an orbit and then we will carry on. Maybe we'll bring a gateway station over and do a uh, rendezvous. Actually, I think there is there a station in orbit? Should be a station in orbit. Yeah, Aurora 1. Let's do that. We'll go near that one. Well, we'll get into an orbit first. Wow, great questions so far tonight. Keep them coming. One thing I really like about MechJeb is it auto warps, and it auto warps very close to a bird. Like, see, it just dropped us out like five seconds before. What do you think a seat on New Shepard is worth compared to Virgin Galactic's quarter? See, Virgin, how long is a Virgin Galactic flight targeted to be? Because I think depending... Weightlessness says it's six minutes. So if Virgin Galactic is six minutes and New Shepard is only like three, I feel like New Shepard has to be less. So maybe like 175. Maybe you can make a challenge for 200. Um, obviously different types of vehicles, but New Shepard's turnaround of the booster and the capsule. We don't know about the capsule, but the boosters seem like they shouldn't be that hard to turn around we don't know but they they've had big breaks in between but if they had a fleet of them it could be faster we don't know virgin galactic turnaround either so i think it's reliant on that but i've got a question coming from discord hmm So we got the question, what would I say if I was the first person on Mars? Ooh, so many options. One of my options would want, one thing I would want to say was to the people that, you know, like, we've all got those people that said, you know, you couldn't do it. 
you know, I think it'd be interesting to be like, look, I made it. Uh, or what is that? And then like cover the camera or something. I think those would be funny. Um, I don't know. Something I would say inspiring. I think, you know, I, I think it's one thing we, the world's been through a lot in this last year. And if I was going kind of off of that thought, you know, us going back to the moon, but then to Mars really shows that we are one race. We are human. And I think that's the way we need to live. Um, something along those lines but i'm not too sure it's a big question i would want to put more thought into it than five minutes on a youtube stream for it um to give something valid but something that i hope isn't just a statement people say but actually causes people to do something what do you th yeah what do you what would you guys say let us know in the chat what would you guys say if you were the first people on Mars or the first person back on the moon? Let us know what you think. What would you say? If I could be the first man on Mars, I would bully the bullies that bullied me. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't bully them. But I'd definitely be like, surprise. Remember me? How you like me now? <laughs> it's good to be black on the moon. Oh my goodness. Oh, we're muted there. Not sure how long we were muted. Hopefully not too long. Um... <laughs> No one knows what that's from. <laughs> it's from Space Force. And uh, it's a really great scene that you, you sh I encourage you to watch. Uh, it's good to be... It's supposed to be it's good to be back on the moon. But, um, whoops. That would go viral. Could you imagine? The internet would break. That would be more viral than Elon on Saturday Night Live. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Golden Gamer, I have no idea what I would say. Although I would have to think about it for a couple of years, probably. Yeah, Space Force, so good. I have to watch it again. It's been a while. And we're coming up on our rendezvous with the station here. Yeah, wait. Where am I? How did I get here? That'd be good. You could just say, are we there yet? <laughs> That'd be a good one, James. I like that one, James. Wait, where am I? Did anyone watch Stowaway? That'd be good. Something like that. How did I get here? Now, I don't think this has a docking port on it, which I probably should have put one on if I thought about it. Just did a slight mod there. We could have docked this to our Aurora station that I built and put into orbit. But, uh, we're going to let it do its rendezvous here. Slowly making an approach.
I remember evaporating Jeb on Kerbin's. <laughs> yeah. Here we go, coming in. This is what one that I built a station called Aurora Station. And I think we're going to bring ourselves just a little bit closer. Channeling Newton. If we have reached further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I like the reaching. I think something like that could be really great. You know. First we reach to the, you know, first we reach to the skies. You know, then to the heavens. And now to the stars or something. I mean, it's not the stars, but now to the, the rest of our solar system or something. Um, you know, something there could be interesting. Um Oh, thank you. We'll we'll hop over to it once we get this into an orbit uh, with it, because there's a bunch of crafts on it, uh, or there should be at least. should be a big ship at the bottom, I think. And this should be the little ship, unless it didn't necessarily save the full download, so we'll have to look. No, I think we've got the big ship over here. There should be like a little ship right at the end here. We'll take a look. Do not go gentle into that good night. Mm -hmm. Do something like that. Do you think Virgin Galactic will ever switch to an autopilot system because it might be more reliable, or do you think they'll stick with pilots? Ooh. That's a good question. I don't I don't think it was necessarily built to go automatic, so I think pilots make sense because that's what it was designed for. Generally speaking, if you try to change things, it's not how they were designed. That's when you run into problems. Um, maybe one day, like maybe like a Mach 2. Or version two type of thing. GI things are not only impossible. Things are only impossible until they are not. John Luke Picard. I'd love to see a Star Trek quote. That'd be great. Some sort of quote. There's so many quotes from Star Trek that you could use for exploration, or for exploration, and for things like that. And that'd be neat. But uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna switch to. Our station, if it'll allow us. Oh, switch. Will you let me switch? Might have to go out to the tracking station and come in that way. <laughs> Humans are too dumb to drive. Yeah. Let's switch over to Aurora One and we can try out that uh, EVAs, the free EVA. <laughs> True, especially the ones in New Jersey. Marcus is from New Jersey. He's allowed to say that. See, we have bad drivers, but we also have terrible potholes. Like, if you think you've seen a road with bad potholes, you haven't come to my city. So did this not save with the crafts? Doesn't look like it. We did have two big crafts at our docking ports. But it looks like they both might not have made it. That's okay. 
let's jump in our station and uh, we'll go from here so now we're in our free eva let's rotate see that would be trippy being able to do that like that would be I just have to do this to be able to keep up with the chat here. There we go. There we go. So uh, we're going to see what's down, and then we'll go up. So you can fly through. So I don't think we want to go. Do we want to go down? Oh, I think we're in the center of the station. Yes. So if we go this way, we should have some more. There we go. Some more crew. Hello. Multiple levels here. And then this is actually one of the inflatable modules. So when it deflates, it's the size of this interior part. But when it's inflated, it's quite large. Let's fly through the floors. Be interesting to see what Starship's like, but this is very much what we can kind of expect. Living facility wise and different things like that so we we'll keep flying here we do have the stairs that go up as well and then there's some more seating i don't think there's any yeah and then we have a second inflatable module so we'll just keep flying through that and see in here there's all these different compartments and these are look like beds i believe the beds on the walls uh, like semi private, and that is the end of the modules. There, um, we do have a cupola, but it doesn't like going into that cupola. So, if we fly out here, I'll just show you what we have flown through. There's a little cupola, but there are those two inflatable modules. I'll have two of these for Christmas. Two, uh, I might have missed something. Uh, Golden, I guess the answer to the question of why we go to space could be that there will always be problems on Earth. If we solve the, if we solve the problems, we won't ever go to space. Hmm, interesting thought. So both sides of the station are identical here. Uh, but we will fly down and we will fly up as well because there is more of the station. But we'll start by going down, down to the big cupola, uh, and then we'll go out into the rings as well. Only rings we won't go to are the big spinning rings to start with just because uh, we actually have to stop them to fly in. So we'll come back in here, back to kind of where we started, back to exactly where we started. And now we'll come down this way. This is the joint. So now we'll head down into the station. You can see that big cupola bay coming up here. And we should be... This should be a living habitat, I believe. Or these might be ones that just have windows. Like just pass-throughs. So It's not a perfect mod, but it works pretty well. And then here is the nice big cupola window, which uh, I, I really hope we build something like this in the near future. Uh, it'd be really neat to see something like this on the International Space Station. There's a little hatch, but you can come up and be inside and really get to a good view of station. Now we're going to fly up. Absolutely. Going to space does have a lot of benefits for us here on Earth, too.
We're going to fly down this way because, again, both these sides are similar. There's our lunar starship just hanging out. Back to the joint part here. And we're going to head down this way. <laughs> All good, Felix. I was like, two of. <laughs> Feel like I missed something. <laughs> Whatever it is. If it's space models, I'll take two, too. So this is identical, so we're in the wrong tube. We went up that way, so now we want to go down into one of these and out to the... Because those will be identical as well. So that's actually the station. And then we have our long corridors that go down to our docking ports. And then we have these as well, which are little tubes up to the um, solar panels. Last part are the circles. Which, uh, that's where we were headed. That's what we were missing. Lots of moving pieces, so the game is a little slower. We're just going to pop in here. There we go. And then there is everything. Now these do spin, which I can turn on here. We'll go into one of the bike seats. We can actually sit in. Does let you do it. You just gotta be in the right position. And it's want to do it, but we got all our storage. And this spins all the way around in a circle, keeps repeating. And then this is the tube that goes straight down and joins us back to the station. So that is uh, Aurora 1. Kind of all of it. And we have the big bays out there. We're going to return him to his seat. There we go. And back out to the station. Free EVA. Hey, S SFS, how's it going? Yeah. Free EVA to Kumon. You can see all our RCS on the station as well quite a bit and then what we'll do we'll go back out to tracking station because i believe where the big ship is is actually around minmus and we'll fly a couple more crafts here double check the twitters make sure nothing huge and breaking is happening See if this is the one that I was thinking of. I had this dream to go to the moon at least once in my lifetime, and my parents always laughed at me that about that, but not as much. But now, not as much. It's true. You know, when we were kids. You know, in the last, anyone that's, you know, kind of been grown up in the last 20, 30 years, sure, space maybe was an option. If you went into being in the atmosphere, this is a station that was, okay, calm down, RCS off. Um, you know, space was an option if you went into a certain profession, but uh, it really is starting to open up. And, 
I know our Discord was talking about, you know, if, you know, that one day, maybe if this channel hits, you know, 100k, we'll look and see, or, you know, a million. Um, maybe we'll try to uh, figure out a flight on New Shepard or something. We'll have to see. I dreamed I was on Mars with my friends. I say in 10 years, we send you for a live stream on the moon. <laughs> in 10, I have to wait 10 years? I have to be 35? Ah, if you hit 1K, you will eat a hat. <laughs> or 100K. <laughs> that is true. That was stated. That was stated that... Uh, this was the second station that we built. This is our Sally Hut station. Um, yes, technically that would be correct. Um, yeah. But I didn't say where I was going to eat the hat. I could eat it while I'm having zero. Let's be honest. I'm not doing it if I only have three minutes of zero G. If I'm in like a new shepherd and I got three minutes or Virgin Galactic and I got six, mm -mm. I'm enjoying those three to six minutes. Uh, I'll go on like a zero G flight or something and I'll eat a hat. If we hit one mil, everyone donate a quarter and send Zach to space on a new shepherd. Well, we got to hit a hundred thousand first. So if you're watching and you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you have social media, Take 30 seconds, share the channel. Let's get people to subscribe. Uh, we've got the goal of, you know, maybe 10K by the end of the year. Um, I think we can smash that. But uh, we need your help. Share it out. Get your friends to subscribe, things like that. Because of the lawsuit against NASA, you know, bureaucrats. So, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's... Uh... What is burning? Okay, that's what's burning. But let's go back, fly some other stuff. But, uh, yeah, help share it out. Get it. You could eat it on an airplane. Too. Exactly. I, I'll, I'll eat it during that. You know, most people eat like a Skittle or something. I'll just have a hat. I'm just... For the sake of all involved, don't promise to eat a hat until you learn how to make a nacho. Ooh. See, it's true. I never said what type of hat. Maybe it's chocolate. Be a nice chocolate hat with our logo on it. I'm thinking about getting a logo on this wall. It's like right here. Nice big logo. So we'll see. And champagne, please, to go with. Yes, I'll have two glasses of champagne to go with my hat. Preferably a Moscato. Yeah, that's what we'll do. See, we're, this is just turning into this really big plan. So, but uh, yeah, we hopefully are going to start doing some giveaways soon uh, and stuff. So let's see if we can get to that 10K in the near future. I think it's doable, but uh, we need your help sharing it out and sharing videos too. Letting your friends and family know about uh, videos that excite you and things that are uh, new and exciting. 3D printed chocolate space. Ooh. But is that a hat or a helmet? I guess I could upgrade it. I said a hat. I could do a helmet. We'd have to see what our uh, Discord thinks about that. <laughs> that was part of that original conversation. But uh, maybe. Champagne might... Uh, champagne must not be fun in zero. Yeah, that'd be a lot of bubbles. That would be a lot of bubbles. Maybe not zero G. Well, we eat the hat, and then during the... It's not the parabola, I don't think. It's the other one. Uh, that's when you can have the champagne. Ooh, I did have this earlier. And we'll switch it here. It's going to have a bunch of wheels on it, because we tried to drive it to see if it would work. But we'll just get rid of the wheels. Just looking at this from this angle, any guesses what this craft may be? Let us know in the chat. But uh, yeah, if I ever get, if, if I'm going on New Shepherd because of you guys, you guys are amazing. And uh, we'll have to see what we can figure out. But I mean, let's see, a couple years from now, it's mm -hmm, possible. So any guesses? Marcus can't guess because he knows what it is.
a cylindrical train. Well, I was trying to drive it. Instead of Seiko, we'll hear champagne. I mean, that could be pretty fun. Isn't that the craft that comes out of the water? Uh, if you can get it in the water, yes. Marcus, eat it on the vomit comment. I don't want to go on the vomit comment. You are right there, Golden Gamer. You're right on. This is Sea Dragon, uh, which isn't fiction uh, fictional. It was real. It was something really designed. No, this is not the craft your sister made. Um, but it was a real design, something NASA was looking at. Uh, and basically, Starship is what we... Why is this such a bouncy launch pad? Very bouncy. We'll warp to sunrise again here, just because, you know, it's nicer being able to actually see the craft. What happened to the monster roll? The monster roll? What monster roll? Real life. It's California, probably. It does look like a California pad, doesn't it? Ballet dish, and there's like... See, I want to go into this VAB. Like, what VAB is this? What I want... Really... Where is this crew? Where did I... Where did I put a crew on this? Oh, are they in here? They are in there. Okay, so they're in a cockpit that has no windows. Oh, it does have a window. No, that's a flag. It was torturing Kerbals. Wait, did someone actually make a monster Discord roll? I totally missed that. Um, yeah, definitely California, as we are really shaky. But, um, oh, I need to make it. Yes. Will you try the Kerbal Killer 3000 craft? Uh, sure, I can download that one. So we're just going to pretend like 2,000 meters is where, or 1,000 meters is where the water line, well, not even, 250 meters is where the water line breaks. We need to take off before the fire. We need to take off before the fire reached the mountain. <laughs> yes. I mean, we're gonna miss the mountain. Gonna be close. Why launch from the water? Definitely not Cali. The mountains are not engulfed. These are terrible. Uh, why launch from the... So they wanted to launch it from the water um, for a similar reason to why sea dr uh, Starship will need to launch from an orbital platform, which is the volume. So uh, if you saw a photo we tweeted a, a, probably a week or so ago now, um, there was a camera that was 1,500 meters or something away from the Falcon 9 pad, and it actually melted. Um, now, imagine a Starship launch. 
um, with, you know, 28, 29 Raptor engines on the bottom. Uh, it's something that's going to need distance, uh, not only for the heat, but for the sound. Um, there's talks about like a 30 mile exclusion zone uh, for a launch of the super heavy booster. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But yeah, that's why they wanted to do Sea Dragon from the water was the sound, especially because at that point you were talking one big engine at the bottom. Like this is meant to be like one massive engine. That's a big engine. That'd be very loud. Do you think Canadian Space Agency should start its own private space launch initiative like NASA? I think it'd be really nice to see NASA start doing some like launches and stuff. Um, I would like to see it happen because it'd be easier for me to cover. But um, I know there is possibly a launch facility being built in St. John, Newfoundland, I believe it was. That's for small sats, but it's a private company, not the Canadian Space Agency. Um, it didn't melt the Falcon 9 itself, but from a brush... Right, well, yes, but it's basically the Falcon 9. Oh, okay, that's what I was thinking. He, no, yeah, exactly. Uh, when do you think the Canadian Space Agency will bring humans to moon? Canadians will be on Artemis 3. Uh, sorry, Artemis 2. So the crewed lunar flyby will have a Canadian on it. And then they're thinking Artemis 4 will be the one that has... Uh, a Canadian on it to actually land on the surface. Um, so it is still something that, uh, but yeah, Canadians will be a big part of the Artemis program. Very large part. Hmm. It's not letting me go full thrust here. I wonder why we're limited. Interesting. Uh, yeah, the, the grass fire. True. Yeah, no grass fire if you're in the middle of the ocean. That is true. Soviet Russia, the moon lands on you. Uh, well, our Kerbals are still alive. Can they get out is the question. Haha, we still have our parachutes. They're fine. Oh, uh, there's plenty of hydrogen oxygen out there if something happens to separate them. Man. Big boom. Rip. <laughs> champagne. <laughs> See, I told you I'd bring the champagne. It's like a big bottle of champagne. It's very slowly making its way to the surface. Just PTSD and blunt force trauma. I don't know what you're talking about. They look fine. What I really like is there's no room for them to move. Oh, well, he looks sort of fine. Oh, they landed. There's two. We fly. Okay. Oh, he's on the roof or something. Yeah. I don't think they can get out, though. Can they? Yeah, they can't get out. Can they? Oh, they can. There's the hatch. Ooh. See, he's good. Big broom, ruined fly. By any standards, a bit green. <laughs> Just a little bit. 
Little green eyes slightly dilated. So one thing I was thinking tonight is we would do a live build uh, and see what you guys think we should build. So if you guys want to drop a rocket name in the chat, uh, we will, uh, or I will, attempt to build one here, and we will fly in and try to get it to orbit. And then we might conclude with that, actually, this evening. But uh, what rocket do you want me to see built? Can be any rocket. Um, and then give me creative license, because I'll hopefully try to make it as realistic, but flyable. So we're going to start with that. So let me pull up the VAB. Build the crew. Ooh, crew dragon. Ooh, that's starship. Let's do not SpaceX ones. Let's try that. Because I got mods for those. <laughs> Delta 4 medium plus 4.4. It's pretty specific. Specific. SLS, Braun, that would be hard. Braun would not be, and I will tell you why. Let me show you. I hear you. Here it is. You want the Braun? I give you the Braun. And then we can come down here to utility, and we need the, where is it? It is in here. Let me find it. There's the bronze butt. And where's... Is it structural? Engine mount, we don't need. I have the Baron built into another one of the like files, but I need to move it over. So we can quickly build one, and then we'll take a look and see what other builds you think we should do here tonight. So keep them coming. Drop them in the suggestions. There's the landing gear. Uh, where's the back landing here? I think the back landing gear are built in, if I remember correctly. Where is mm -hmm. Where's the body of the Baron? This is when you use the search. Oh, there it is. Baron fuselage. There we go. And then we, then we take this and we just put that there. And then we need the tail. And then the rudder. Oh. Rudder is the only one that doesn't have like a perfect piece for it. Really? Hmm. left aileron and we need the right aileron what else am i missing the brawn parachute goes I believe there i don't know but the this the i think that's this piece here This is the part I didn't actually build. Baron body flap. Where's the body flap? Oh, that goes here. Down here. That goes there. And then there is an airlock. Let me open that. And that goes in there. And there's also the Braun docking port. Which 
Not sure where that would go, but that's okay. Let's see. Brown parachutes. I don't know where those would. Hmm. All right, the parachute's there. So we have that. And then we just need the engines. I believe are those two. Or similar. They seem a little big. What I thought. See other suggestions we got here. We got N1 Mercury Redstone. I do have one of those that we could fly. N1 Space Shell. You could maybe build the X37. Oh, that'd be interesting. New Glenn. I think the Atlas V501 launches the X37. Ooh, do like a combo build. BFR, a flying saucer. Good options. Let's go in here. We'll launch this one, and then we will attempt to see. I feel like this is supposed to attach by itself. Let's see. I don't think there is a Baron decoupler. Can we attach? Does I want to attach? Let's try a different one. How about a radial decoupler? No? Okay. Well, we're going to use shuttle one then. Oh, might be a good idea to give this... This has landing gear already. So why is it saying I need landing gear? But we'll go fuel tanks, and we will get one of these. Oh, that's a little big. Uh, which one do we want? Something with a rounded nose. That's even bigger. Mm -hmm. Here we go. We'll just launch it on a Falcon 9. Make a literal seamless cub fly just for the chow. Oh, cube. Oh, well, I pictured a flying line cub. <laughs> a flying. <laughs> That'd be funny. Let's see here. We should have... Here, what we'll do, we'll go... Cancel. We'll name this Baron. We'll open. Save and continue. And we will go get the shuttle that's in here. Because it already has... We use the donning. We'll merge. We'll... Hmm. Will it let me talk? No. Doesn't want me to do it, but it'll give me an idea which boosters to use or which fuel tanks. So when you're looking for
Yeah. I think this might be one too many, but it'll be close. Can we do a gold falcon heavy nose cone? No? this here see what other suggestions we got coming in i should build kansas okay tell us your best joke click alt and then click left yes i do that a lot uh, build the northrop german orbital atk omega rocket oh my i think you have to change the shuttle cockpit to the primary control to be able to separate it right yeah probably Felix Perseverance said to Ingenuity, pull over. <laughs> that was the... F <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. This looks about right. Now we just have to put some SRBs on it. And we'll be all set. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Is Marcus going to prepare our song? If you join us in the Discord, you can hear a song that we play every time I fly a craft that I have built. Um, not symbolizing that they do not normally go well, but yeah, not yet. You got to pause it. <laughs> this looks a little out of whack, I think. Some slight adjustments here. Whoever chose this song in the Discord whenever they chose it, it's pretty perfect for right about now. <laughs> I just want one more, please. Okay, fine. We won't have one more. And now we just need our fuel tank piping, which is flying pyramid Atlas five four one LK four orbital SMK four. So many. We're gonna have to save some of these and do these in the future. That's what we'll do. Uh, let's throw some crew on here. It's crewed. We don't need three pilots. We'll only sacrifice two. I mean, fly two.
Ooh, good question from Yam. Uh, what is your main inspiration for space? Ooh, deep question. I like it. Um, hmm. I don't know. Space has just been something that's been there. Well, obviously it's there. But, like, since I was a kid that I've always been fascinated on, like, probably one of the first things I drew when I was, like, two or three, like, properly drew was space shuttles if I wasn't even younger. There's just something there. So, like, I think it's one, space is something that everyone dreams about, whether they directly or indirectly think about it. We all, at some point, have stopped and looked at the moon or the stars, or some people have looked at the sun. Not smart, but they've done it. Um, but had that thought of what are we? And I think that mindset of thinking of, you know, this isn't a circle, but we are this little globe suspended in nothing because of gravities around us and that, and it, it gets to a lot. Uh, I don't want to get into it. <laughs> We're not a disc. <laughs> We're not a disc discord. <laughs> We're not flat earth. <laughs> We're not going to get into that because then the chat's going to go wild with some special people. Um, but uh, it is a uh, <laughs> train of thought just gone, but just that whole idea of being, you know, we're on such a small thing. And I think when we start going back to the moon and then when we start living on Mars, there's going to be a lot of mindset changes of all of humanity. And I, I, I look forward to that. I think when we lose the thought of, oh, we're Canada, we're the U.S. And like, we do need that. That is extremely important to have. But when we start breaking down the barriers of we are human, we are from Earth, that changes a lot of thoughts. Um, and concepts of what we do to work together. Um, so I think that's a really special thing. I, I, I don't get into it a ton on the channel, but I am a person of uh, religion and belief as well. And I think there's a lot of beauty in it in that sense as well. Um, but yeah, I think space is just one of those things that it's, it's a unifying factor of we all wonder what. Uh, and, you know, we're lucky enough to live in a generation where we're seeing it, you know, Many people thought the Apollo generation were the lucky ones seeing us go to the moon. We're going to be the generation that sees us go to the moon and live, but go to Mars and live and start living on two planets at the same time, um, which I think is pretty freaking cool and exciting to watch. And the fact that we have a chance that Mars, I think, is pushing it, saying that we could all go to Mars. I mean, maybe they need like a news broadcaster. Elon, I'll go. Um, but... Uh, the fact that we have a chance to go to space if you can afford it now, and we're not talking tens and tens of millions unless you want a crew dragon flight, we're talking hundreds of thousands. Um, that's pretty incredible. Hey, Brandon, good to see you. I may have looked at the sun. Oh, no. Yeah, don't do unless it's only if it's a solar eclipse and you have the glasses. Actually, those are something I have to add to the shelves behind me. I have those upstairs. Uh, the simple idea that we actually see the past looking at the stars. Yeah. That's, you know, absolutely. That's a huge thing. I've used that at summer camps quite a bit. Uh, talking with kids is like, you know, look at the stars. Okay, that light is this many thousands or tens of thousands of years old. Like, that's crazy. Earth is a donut. Oh, no. Here we go. Dinosaur Earth Society. I thought it was a pyramid. Yeah, I will pull up the Kerbal Killer 3000 here in a moment. Earth is a disc just in three dimensions. <laughs> It's a disc that's very fat. That's what it is. And let's get our engines set up here. We're going to see if this works. I'm slightly unsure of how this will go, but we will see. Four, actually. It's true.
Uh oh. Nope. I don't think we're supposed to be turning that way. Uh oh. <laughs> Oh, this is going to end badly. Hey, we made it. We're going to try that again. Let's see. Yeah, oh, that loads up here. Uh, I agree that perspective change will be great for humanity. Wonder what kind of perspective the children who will grow up on Mars will have on the universe. Ooh, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a big we're we're having those questions now. You know, we we question as kids what would it be to go into space. Now kids are what would it be to go live on Mars? What are those kids that are born on Mars or born on the way to Mars? And I mean, we're still talking probably a couple decades till we really start trying to do that. Um but, you know, what are our kids kids going to think? Uh, it's really cool. Earth is a triangle. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, I know the moon and sun are a cube because I saw them in Minecraft. <laughs> it's, I saw them in Teletubbies, and they were a circle with a really cute baby face on it. And in Bear the Big Blue House, the moon was a female. So... Who knows? Is it all real? Is it all a simulation? During the Cold War, <laughs> during the Cold War, the USA and the Russian were in space together, building space had no borders. Yeah. <laughs> Eject. No nominal flight path. Yeah. Uh, the moon is rectangular. I saw it in a WhatsApp message. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Something really exciting for me is that the space elevator on Mars is possible without even using exotic materials. Imagine a geosynchronized orbital platform tethered to the surface for cargo. Ooh, that would be fascinating. Yeah, I mean, Mars is different than Earth, maybe. Soviet launch abort system is just ripping the nose off by crashing into a mountain. <laughs> yeah. More seriously, did anyone hear about the jelly stuff the Chinese identified on the moon? Jelly stuff? Isn't that the stuff they took to the moon? Didn't we take that to the moon? Like the Americans, I thought, took the jelly stuff to the moon? At one point? So let's see. Can we launch just with the SRBs? Is that enough? Can we... Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. So we've now learned crashing straight into the ground is better than backwards. But look. Hey, but look. The engine, it's still going. We can still get cargo. Nope. No idea what it's... Maybe it does? Maybe it has a probe core? I'm not too sure. Mm, no. No. We're going to revert this and we're going to adjust this here. Yeah, like Jello. Because one six gravity steel cables could possibly even do it. Wait, wasn't Mars a disk? No, their craft detected something jelly for real, okay? No, they found some substance on the far side or something like... The mystery... Oh, we need mystery goo? I can get you some mystery goo. Where's mystery goo? There we go. Mystery goo. We're ready to go to the moon. Poutine, uh, poutine to the moon base. Yes. The Ace Burger Poutine from Original Joe's to the moon. 
I agree. But uh, I don't know why this isn't flying. So we're going to carry on and build another one of your suggestions that we had. Can we get a Saturn V? I mean, we can. It's already built. Did you want a Saturn V or did you want a Saturn V with the Starship SN5 top? Which would you prefer, Dakota? We have options here. We do have a Saturn here. We could do a Saturn Heavy. We could just strap a Baron to the side of this. Have a good night, Brandon. We'll see you later. Thanks for dropping in. Regular. Been waiting two weeks. Been waiting two weeks. Well, let's fly a Saturn V for you. <laughs> Saturn SNV. Yup. While that loads up, a couple quick things that I will uh, go over for those that are just joining. Uh, possibly uh, a couple new things on the channel. Super Chats and Super Stickers are now available. That's a great way to control the broadcast, get us to uh, maybe change what we're doing or make sure that your craft's next up in line. Everything from that is comes from Super Stickers and Super Chats during the landing pad for the next couple of months. We'll be going towards our Inspiration 4 fundraiser. The link's in the description. Uh, so two ways. You can go through Super Chat or Super Sticker, or if you want 100% of your donation to go to St. Jude's uh, instead of some to YouTube, uh, you can go to the link in the description, uh, make a donation there, and then just let me know that you've done that, and then we will uh, read your, you know, do your chat that way. That way all the money goes to St. Jude's rather than other people. So, so let me check out. That's part of our Inspiration 4 coverage. Really excited to be working with them on that, uh, helping to do cancer treatment and research. So take a look. I know it's been a hard time, but uh, even five bucks uh, really does add up together. So have a good night, Felix. We will see you later. Looks like we got a couple lights down here, but I don't think they're controllable. Oh. Can I turn them off? No. I'm going to set this up here. Go to 150 inclination. Force. Do we want to roll? No, we don't need to roll. Engage, RCS on, don't need that yet. Oh, we're spinning. I don't know why we're spinning, but we're spinning. But we're on our way. Did I forget a crew? No, oh, we got a crew. Here's a Kerbal. There's three of us. Oh, you can't see Kerbal. Let's try that again. <laughs> you literally can't see Kerbal. <laughs> we, you, you're supposed to see it in my reflection of my glasses. <laughs> Let's try that again. Discord's like just, you know, it's all normal because they can see just Kerbal. <laughs> oh, that's great. Let's try that again here, shall we? You want, to, we can do daytime, sure. Why not? You have a specific hour? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not trying to pick an hour. Uh,. Jarek Isaacman tweeting into the crew, crew Dragon Simulator. An hour later, come out. Another Starlink mission's already done. Like, yep, that's how fast SpaceX moves. Go into a simulator for an hour, everything changes. There we go. Engage autopilot. Three, two, one, go. I don't know why it's spinning, but it is spinning. There's the Mun off in the distance.
forgot to turn off infinite propellant. That might help. <laughs> I think at this point we would have staged already. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm going to try this again without infinite propellant so we don't spin out. Are we doing launch or full Apollo? I'm down for what? Uh, we can try a full Apollo. Let's try a full Apollo with mech chip. Little mech, as little mech chip as possible, but mech chip. Have a good night, G. We'll see you later. Poga Chico, we blew it. What? Just like how NASA did it, right? Yeah, you just time warp, reverse, do a somersault, and then on your way. Totally normal. Totally nominal. 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 My first Kerbal Mun landing had a touchdown velocity of just over 100 meters a second. I suggest going a little slower. Slower might be a good idea. Absolutely. Now, one thing I wanted to ask uh, is something that we can uh, have as an option. Would you guys prefer having Patreon as an option, or would you want YouTube memberships, or have both as an option? I know some people prefer one or the other. Uh, not expecting anyone does it, but if you were to pick, would you prefer Patreon or YouTube? And let us know in the chat. Guess both. I've used both, so I'm not sure. But I figured, you know, we want the Launchpad to be something that you guys, you know, help build. Uh, and we want to, you know, make it accessible for you guys. So. How good is the financial was less than 5k subs? I don't know how that stuff works. Uh, it works interestingly. Um, I'll be honest, I don't fully know. It's only been a couple days that we've been on. Um, you to be able to qualify, I'm not, I won't go deep into it. We'll probably do a video down the road about it. Um, you know, try to be a little transparent on some of that progress. Uh, to be able to be accepted into the YouTube Partner Program, which has a lot of benefits to it. Um, YouTube supports there. There's a lot of training and stuff they offer as well. Um, that you can access once you have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. Um, so that's normally pretty hard to get to. Um, our channel was very lucky to have a few videos really take off. Not even the videos I thought they would be that took off. Um, but some other ones in the past, and I'm so grateful that you guys are here and have uh, trusted me with a subscribe and, you know, hanging out. The fact that we have 10 people watching and we got some people on Discord hanging out tonight is something that uh, some of the early Discord people and I talked about, you know, being like a dream of at the end of the year type of thing. So the fact that we're doing it only a couple months in uh, from really going into it, uh, really excited. Once you get that, you have to fill out a application for a 
AdSense account, um, which you have to go through an approval. That takes a few weeks. Uh, and then you can apply for a uh, the YouTube Partner Program in itself. So there's so stages. Once you're accepted into the YouTube Partner Program, um, that can take, they say, up to a month. Um, mine took, well, my denial actually took up to, it took about a week uh, for like through a weekend, kind of like a week to the day. Um, ended up actually getting denied. Um, thanks to some support from some of the other YouTube channels that are team space and some of our discord people uh, and stuff had some great recommendations on, you know, maybe what it was, let's make plans. Uh, if you were denied, you can try again in 30 days. Um, another YouTube channel that space related who has 170,000 plus subscribers actually ran into a similar issue. Um, you do go up for renewal. I believe it's every year to stay in the partner program. Um, so subs and views generally aren't hard, but they do re-review your channel just to make sure it's still active. You need to still be active uh, on YouTube to be able to stay in. Uh, and they actually got denied for a similar thing that I was denied for. That was just a misunderstanding what our content is. Um, if you look at the content, some of our content, uh, one video in particular, you would say it was just a re-upload of another video, but it was actually highly edited uh, and shortened to be a summary for you guys from one of our live streams. Um, that video really took off. There was some confusion. Um, about oh, two weeks after the denial, ended up talking to YouTube through Twitter, um, actually got a response, which was really amazing, connecting with their support team through it. They took a review and uh, that was a Friday. And on Monday morning, I woke up and we had been reaccepted. Well, not reaccepted, accepted for the first time. So. We've only been in since really Monday, so it's still quite new. Um, but um, yeah, it's something that there's a lot of options. I've been watching a lot of the training videos. There's a lot of tips and stuff from YouTube, which is really nice uh, to kind of have a better idea of uh, what works well with YouTube and what doesn't and different things like that. A lot of the stuff I knew from taking marketing classes and stuff as well for some of like the designs, the tips and stuff that they're giving people, which is awesome. Uh, but it's free to be in the YouTube Partner Program once you qualify. And then that being in the program is when you qualify for Creator Awards. So the YouTube Play Buttons, which hopefully one day. Um, but also that you can qualify for monetization, for ads, uh, for memberships, super chats, super stickers, all that type of stuff. So um, it's not something we want to excessively flood the channel with. Like we're not going to say we're only going to talk to a member chats ever type of thing or anything like that. You know, if we ever have streams that, you know, in the future, you know, ever get, you know, tens, hundreds of thousands of people watching at a time, then sure, they're, you know, super chats and stuff will help in that case. But uh, we want Launchpad to be accessible. That's why we've built a really good mod team to help stay on top of the questions. Even tonight, there was points where I was building, they were reading me the questions uh, in my ear to make sure I can stay on top of those um, for it. So, uh, it's interesting. It's it's very unique. It's very different. It's always changing the actual funding side of it. Um, I want to be in it for a few weeks or months before I really give feedback on it. Uh, but from what I've watched from some YouTubers, it, it changes quite frequently. Um, but it can be very lucrative and it can, you know, help make this full time um, on top of other things, which we're looking at doing with the launch pad. Uh, in the future, but we'll share more announcements about some of the other stuff that's happening with the launch pad uh, when we can say more in the future um, for it. So if you're in our Discord in the behind the scenes part because you're a patron, you sometimes get an advanced look at some of that stuff. Uh, so definitely something to take a look at. Um, for being at two and a half K subs, uh, not currently something I could live off of. Um, but maybe one day in the future as that number goes up, it could be. So Patreon would be my preference were I a little better. No worries, James. Good to know. I know Patreon's a pretty good simple. Is Discord like talking or just hanging out muted? Uh, we, we've got everything on Discord. So I'm normally live, I, I would say almost every night, at least for a portion of the time, playing Kerbal, editing a video, doing social, different things like that um for it now there's a couple we've got a bunch of channels i mean i could pull up the discord actually uh once we fly this i'll pull up discord and we can uh give a show of what it's like in there but we've got a bunch of channels so we've got like our general 
chat stuff, and then we've got like TLP Live news stuff. Um, a bunch of the channels are always public. We've got probably over half the Discords live uh, and open to the public. And then there are parts that are exclusive to the Patreons uh, memberships, and then soon to be the YouTube memberships uh, that are early access, behind the scenes, um, you know, private chats that are for those certain tiers. Uh, and stuff. We really built it so it's in a place that it is ready for um, when we are bigger. I always like pre-planning because then it makes a better experience for everyone um, and it's just cleaner. It doesn't get to the point where it gets overwhelming and no one's happy. So we're set up for whatever happens with the channel. But uh, so yeah, there's channels to talk about like the news, Kerbal, General Hangout. There's a share your stuff spot. We've got people sharing their Lego builds, their 3D builds, some of their content they're making on YouTube lots of different things there's a few other creators in there as well that occasionally share some of their stuff as well so a whole bunch of different things you don't have to be on camera if you don't want to be uh generally speaking most of us aren't sometimes i am but uh audio we normally use quite a bit but we even have you know if i'm just playing kerbal in the evening uh there is a live chat that corresponds with the audio call so if you don't want to talk you can just watch and you can type response and we can see both so Lots of stuff there. Definitely jump in, take a look. If you have questions, it's a great community that answers questions on how everything works there. So I came from the SN15 unfrozen vid and the Starship Orbital flight plan vids. Some I'm glad they blew up. Yeah, that SN15 video uh, was uh, uh, a pretty special one. The unfrozen edited, just short one. Um, that was quite a surprise. Those were many long nights sitting here being like, what is happening? And if you're in the Discord, you were part of that. Uh, we had a couple videos earlier when we hit the 1,000 that I was live in Discord. Actually, I was live on air when we hit 1,000 too, but uh, we had been live in Discord the night before because uh, we had had a, a really good night uh, just hanging out, reading comments and responses. So do you ever play other games? Right now we've been doing Kerbal. We do want to do other games. I've thought about doing Minecraft maybe. Um, generally, we want to keep it space or STEM related. Uh, we're going to have some other things hopefully in the future of, so like the Lego builds that we did previously, those will be part of weekly night hangouts at the landing pad. Uh, we've got some STEM like building projects that we're working on sourcing um, from a partner that will have an opportunity for you guys to see as well uh, and pick up. So that is what you'll be able to uh, access. So we'll do like a build of those. They're like a, uh, yeah, they're, they're basically a coding programming type thing. A um, bunch of different things like that. So um, not only will it ever be Kerbal, uh, we'll do things. We're also talking about doing some roundtables, like maybe once a month or something, uh, where we'll actually invite some of our Patreon members uh, and some special guests. And we'll do like a roundtable discussion where you guys can still send in your questions. But, you know, we'll bring in maybe a couple people that have absolutely no idea about anything space uh, kind of thing and answer those questions as well. So landing pads always going to be kind of morphing and changing. Uh, it's going to be our more, much more casual hangout time uh, for it, but uh, Kerbal seems to be a pretty good start for it. 2.5K on the way to a million. Honestly, 100,000, that silver YouTube play button is something that was like bucket list for down the road. So the fact that we're on that path already is crazy to me, uh, but very exciting as well. And I'm excited that it's something that I really love. Uh, I've been passionate about space since I was a kid and, you know, never thought I would be the YouTuber. I, I run a production company on the other side. It's a not-for-profit. I'm normally on that side of the camera, um, programming everything and working with the people that are on the front. So it's kind of weird being on this side, um, but it's a great perspective shift and uh, excited to be on the ground this fall down at Kennedy for Inspiration 4. Um, thanks to our Patreon supporters and YouTube supporters and stuff, all those funds. Uh, other than the super chats that come these nights, we'll be going to helping fund that trip from especially from Patreon, uh, as we will be down at the Inspiration for launch party. So excited to be down there bringing that coverage to you guys as well. To yeah, to <laughs> yeah, Dakota, <laughs> two hundred and eighty thousand views from that video. <laughs> um, our biggest video before that was like eighteen k and twelve k. <laughs> so uh, when that video happened. That was a, uh, oh, okay. I guess I'm doing something right. But uh, I have a lot of great feedback too. A lot of people giving suggestions and stuff. So 
I am 25. <laughs> I'm not afraid of saying that. Uh, but this has been floating around a while. It's in a really weird orbit. Okay, it's coming up to finalize its orbit. But we're in a totally wrong orbit compared to where we want to go. We're gonna, oh, that's the MUN. Set as target. Disengage. And we want to do a rendezvous at, let's say, a thousand meters. And we'll give that a try and see what it does. What day is the Inspiration 4? Might see if I could go down there. Inspiration 4, they're currently targeting September 15th. Uh, from what we've been hearing, they're targeting an, a dawn launch. Uh, but we will uh, keep that up to date on Twitter and obviously in our Discord and stuff, making plans for that. Um, when I am down there, uh, we know Marcus is down there in the region as well. Uh, we'll plan, you know, depending how the pandemic is, but it seems like Florida is pretty open right now. Uh, we'll have the option of doing, you know, I don't know, a lunch or a happy hour or a meetup or something. Uh, we might do it at Kennedy. We might do it somewhere else. Um, depending on where the channel's growth-wise, I'm not sure Kennedy would want me to say, hey, 10,000 people come to Kennedy Space Center on a day they're already going to be flooded with people. But uh, I'll be down there for a few days. We'll be there until their return, most likely. Uh, so there'll be a number of days that we can figure something out. And, uh, you know, we could do it. I believe it's a Tuesday they're targeting. So we'll have the landing pad on Wednesday. Uh, we might do a special edition one, or we might do it Thursday, set up somewhere, uh, and we can do one of those roundtable ones in person and actually have a conversation, uh, which would be a lot of fun. So uh, lots of w things we hope to do down in the region to uh, have you guys involved uh, if you're down there. And if you're not down there, then obviously we would uh, be online so you can connect in with us that way. We can save it. Yep. Can they do September 13th? Not the 13th. The 13th, I believe, I think, let me look. I feel like the 13th is the Monday. Because I was looking at flights. Um, let's take a look here. Now, it's not set in stone yet. Yeah, the 13th Monday. So, actually, the launch is on Wednesday. Given that, we might not do the landing pad that night. Just, but we'll see. Uh, we might do a day early or day late or something. Uh, I'll be vlogging the entire trip, so you'll see everything um, with me on that journey as I uh, come down from Canada and do all of that. We've had a few people request that already, so we will uh, definitely be bringing that for you guys as well. Get in a couple more crafts from our Discord here. And say that one more time, Discord. Yep, travel vlogs. That's what's going to happen. Travel vlogs. I'm going from not being a YouTuber to being the most typical YouTuber. On an iPhone. <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm having overnight oats. I don't know. <laughs> you doing Artemis. Also, you paying for my flight from North Carolina. Uh I got to see if I can afford my flight. Uh, actually, at this point, I might not be flying. I might be driving with family um, from Vegas. So I might not be flying, which means the vlogs are going to be fun. Because uh, we will literally be going from pretty much the West Coast to the furthest east you can get in the U.S. Uh, so it will be a lot of fun. But uh, if we are driving... There might be some other plans for some stops to uh, make along the way, but we'll see how things go. I was hoping it would fall on a weekend because of school. They never do launches on weekends, so it's definitely something they won't be on a weekend. Um, now, that's not saying schools might not try to cover it. Um, if we think back to the Challenger era um, and things like that, we don't want to think we don't want to think back to that, but schools followed it it was a big deal so this isn't going to be that because it's spacex and that doesn't happen with spacex and we know spacex is safe um but i think there could be something that you know a lot more people are following it so it should be pretty easy to see it 
uh, North Carolina, just a couple hours of driving, get to 95, take it south and take the exit. 212 to Florida, in Florida. Uh, I know that. Flying is easier. Wait, you're from North... <laughs> Um, Marcus is not from North Carolina. I know that. So I think there's uh, a lot of things that we will see here in the near future that will be uh, rather exciting to see. Um, and I think a lot of people will be covering inspiration for it. It's going to be a very historic flight uh, opening that new era. So... But yeah, if you guys were in the region, is there something that you would want to do? Like what would be, obviously we got tons of time to plan it, but it's always good to have ideas early. Um, lunch, Kennedy, dinner. I'd say happy hour, but I don't think everyone, happy hour down there is 21 versus 18 up here. So I know that's different with some of the people that we have in here. Mm -hmm. Is this going to work? Are we going to actually escape or are we like failing dismally? I think it depends on our next maneuver note is. Oh. Might help if I turn some fuel. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure this is the one you made. Uh, not yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is where we're going to try and get this to work. Okay. Transfer crew, transfer there. Now, decouple. What are you doing? Stay, no. Uh, switch. Ah, there we go. It's like I've been doing this before. Control from here. 
Now we need to reprogram our translunar injection. Engage. Use our third stage because we don't want to use our return stage. I think that was okay to do. Oh, and we're re entering the atmosphere. Will we survive? Doubtful. <laughs> We're still good. We're still good. We got this. We're going to survive. I tried to play KSP on Xbox. It didn't work well. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm not sure that would. Oh boy. Are we going to go up anytime soon? We should start going up here right away. We got our burn now. Burn. Burn. We're getting very low into the atmosphere. Oh. Ah, we saved it. Don't keep burning. Don't stop. Oh, boy. What is it doing? Okay. You know what? This didn't work. Oh, I totally put us in the wrong orbit. Whoops. There we go. Spicy flight profiles. Just, you know, you just want to have some fun and some excitement. Just a little, just a little late, but that's okay. We've only been live for two hours and 43 minutes. No worries, though. You can watch the replay. And uh, we're definitely going to need some extra fuel here, but uh, we'll see what happens. We'll make an attempt. That's all good. We always keep these up so people can watch them after.
Oh, there's oh, there was just me left in here. Okay. Hey guys, how's it going? Yeah, I'm in the console. Yeah, I was in the console there. There we go. I had to change seats. Did we do our... Yeah, we did our injection. Or we're doing our injection. There we go. There's something floating out there near us. What is that? I don't have anything on radar or maps. Is it debris or something? Ross Cosmos. No, Apollo. Aliens. Yeah, have a better view. Discord's making some weird noises. Finalizing that translunar injection, and we should warp here in a moment. Apollo, but every engine is an F1. Right, but the floating hinge was Roscosmos beating you to the moon. <laughs> Maybe. Why are we spinning in circles? There we go. It would help if I. We've used up all our RCS. That could be a slight issue. There goes the earth. Doing a correction burn midway like you would. You forgot that second flight though. True. So let's see it in the chat. Discord is calling this mission a fail. I would say it's been so far a somewhat success. Let me know in the chat. What do you think? Is this a success or a failure?
A <laughs> suck fail. <laughs> Wait, don't call him that? <laughs> Why wouldn't... <laughs> Might be what we have to label them now as, as our database. Here comes the moon. Oh my Dakota. Uh what's it doing? <laughs> it's that's not what we wanted. Um where is that? I just I just rendezvoused. We're gonna. Hmm. Ooh, I'm hearing a challenge from Discord. Next week, Marcus is going to fly this mission and not cheat and do it completely successfully. Oh, oh he wants mech jab, though. He wants mech jab. I'm not sure if, not sure if that counts. Can I try? Just gotta find a beater PC. We've thought about having people. Generally, what we do is we have you on Discord first. See what you can do. And then we've thought about doing some, uh, some, you know, fan or follower uh, flying. So absolutely, it's something we could do. Uh, but we'd say join the Discord for that. Just makes it easier to communicate. Um... And kind of make plans. So, I think Mechjeb counts since he doesn't have the support of NASA Mission Control. Fair. Fair. I have no idea what this is doing. I told it to go into. I had. It. Well, that was really helpful, Mechjeb. I told it to go into an orbit of 65 kilometers, and instead it just aimed me straight at the ground.
You can join Dakota. That's a we're we're listening to Marcus, so it's okay. <laughs> now everyone's welcome, but no, no worries about that. I thought I had seen your name, but I wasn't sure. But yeah, that's all good. Southern Twang's fun. It'll be fun for all of us to fly around and around when KS yeah, KSP2 will be great. Is that an orbit of 65 meters around the center? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that might have been James. Good catch. Good catch, sir. We're going to... Uh, uh, we'll try that again, but I told Marcus that we would... He sent me a craft... So I said I will download that and give it a try. We're going to move that in here. Ta-da! Send me a DM Dakota on Discord, though, if that is something that you'd be interested in. Um, just so I can follow up at some point. I'm figuring out. We've been thinking of doing, like, a fundraiser stream for Inspiration 4. So that might be really great. That's when we're thinking of having, like, a 12-hour or 24-hour stream or something. And uh, do it that way. Uh, game's just thinking here. Trying to decide what it's doing. Uh, if you click on my name, there should be an option to say send message. And then that or add as friend or something on Discord. And then that should uh, connect us at least. Or just say hey in the live hangout or something, and then I'll know yours and I can send you a message. Yeah, Rip. Rip is right. There we go. Now I see you. Oh, okay. Perfect. There we go. Connecting the dots here. Took a minute there. Uh, we're going to go here and we're going to load the... Where did it go? There we go. I have not seen this craft yet, so we're going to find out here... Okay. And we're going to pull this up on YouTube. There we go. So you guys can actually see it. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> this is from Marcus. With a very interesting... See, this satellite, just too small. But what we do, we just do this. Will it do it? It won't do it. Darn. I was, this is just such a small satellite. We're, we're, here, we're, we're just going to do some quick upgrades. We don't need this many thermometers. Good idea. Thank you. 
There we go. We're going to clear the Woomerang launch site. Ooh, someone just sent the last launch of a Minotaur one was eight years ago. So excited. Zach will be covering this one. There's one in 18 days. If there's a live stream, yes. I mean, we could live stream even if we don't have content. Uh, intense screen staring. Need jump scare. Oh my. No, no jump scares. Please. No. Engage. Three, two, one, hop up. Just some quick editing there. That's what it was. If I talked, it probably would have taken like four times as long. So I just wanted to build a, a, a big sat if we're going to launch this. And we're going to turn infinite propellant off because that will this what was on from the last mission so we have to turn it off the beach ball the beach ball of thinking To put a Kerbal on it. Should have put a Kerbal. It's on the side. Wee. All right, it's an NROL, meaning we get to see two minutes flight taped in an eight-year span. Yeah, we won't see much of it, unfortunately, but we'll th we'll try to cover it. We'll at least do a report on it. We always try to report at least on those launches, but uh, general hangout. Slowly making our way into an orbit here.
Delta Four Heavy doesn't lift very heavy things if you think about it. It's true. And it shouldn't be too heavy of a sat. Orion, maybe. Hmm. Oh, it, um, but is, um, okay, so Mechtub decided to deploy everything, even, yes, uh, can we retract now, please, until we're, it won't retract. Oh no. <laughs> These poor solar panels. Oh, I didn't think about that with the solar panels. They overlap. They, they don't stick out far enough. We're just going to retract two of them. We've got two extras. And there we go. We are in our orbit. There we go. Nice little operational satellite. But, uh, I think that might be where we end it for tonight, though think that ends us on a good note. Uh, I mean, we do have that massive booster. Maybe we should push that out of the way. To try to get rid of it, maybe. Maybe. Oh, we missed it. We're just going to leave it alone. But uh, we're going to leave uh, this satellite here in orbit. And I think that is where we will call it for this evening. I know we had a few other crafts we were going to fly and build tonight. I will save those. We might do one of these on the weekend uh, if there's something on Saturday. So keep an eye out for that. Make sure you've got your bell turned on so you know when we go live or post a new video. Uh, follow us over on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube, of course, uh, and get plugged in over on our Discord. But uh, thank you guys for being here tonight. Um, well, great night, some great questions, some great Kerbal Crafts from G and Marcus. Uh, if you build Mar uh, Kerbal Crafts, make sure if you want to share your files, just send those files over through Discord, and we will bring them up on the next landing pad. If you have questions, we'll schedule the next landing pad later here tonight or tomorrow. So if you have a question anytime during the week, 
that link will be the YouTube chat will be open. So you can send those questions in anytime in the next week ahead of next week's stream. Uh, so we, you don't forget them. And so we see them and can have answers for you, but uh, that's going to do it for us here tonight. Here at the pad, we cover everything space, space flight, space engineering in the future of space. And we were glad you're here with us for the landing pad, our weekly night hangout. This is Zach with the launch pad signing off. Have a good night, everyone.